We should be the most joyful people on planet Earth because of what Jesus Christ did for us. The day of, yeah, yeah, I'm a Christian, yeah, yeah, Jesus, yeah, I'm, I'm really facing some tough things at the moment. I can't find a job and, you know, legitimate things, real, real things you're facing. But really, let's, let's back it up a bit. Let's rewind the tape. Anyone have a Walkman? The cassette? Let's bring back Walkmans, I say. Maybe bring back Discmans first. <laughs> they were a great invention, weren't they? <laughs> you can run with a Discman. It's like carrying a Frisbee. <laughs> you can do discus while you're trying to... It's great. Rewind the cassette. Skip a track back and just wait on a minute. Your words are speaking, like Toby said, of the overflow of your heart. And so if you're complaining and criticizing and judging, maybe something hasn't really taken place in your heart and you need to come back to Jesus and repent and surrender to him and say, God, baptize me again. Baptize me again in your death, your burial and your resurrection. And that's exactly what baptism is. That is the, the, the sign of being buried in the water, your sins gone and coming back with new, fresh life. I'm not talking about getting baptized every week. I'm saying every day, going to Jesus Christ and saying, God, Baptize me. Let me live out this life. And this is exactly what Paul is talking about. He's saying, because that has happened, if you continue to accept the sins in your life, maybe you've got to go back and actually go, no, I need to understand what God is doing and let his hand come upon your life and believe in what Jesus has done. So, for if we have been united with him in a death like this, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like this. So he's basically saying, if our, de- if our sins are dead, we also not only just have death, in that moment we have life. Jesus didn't leave us a half-baked truth. He gave us the whole truth. And the truth is, you are alive and well, my friend. You have new life in Jesus Christ. You have new life in Jesus Christ. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing. When he says body, he's not talking about the physical body. He, that word there actually means the whole person. It's giving God all of you. Not just your physical body, but it's everything. It's your mind, it's your heart, it's who you are, your personality, and saying, God, I, I, want, I want to give you all of me. I'm not going to kind of have this Christian life where I show up on Sundays or Wednesday nights and, and, and do it. No, I want, I want all of I want all of myself being given to you. If you give Jesus all, he will give you all that he has. But if you are giving him parts of your life, the the fulfillment of it can't take place. But if you hear the gospel tonight, if you hear what I'm saying here tonight and say, God, I want to give you give you it all. I can see cogs going on in people's minds right now. It's classic expressions on people's faces. But tonight, this is... Amazing, you could be set free. The reality is all of us right now have stuff going on in our lives. But if we bring it to God, understand what God is saying. He wants to set you free. Hello, hello, anyone home? Hello, Bueller. I'm serious, like what? why are we letting anyone, me, the church, anyone obscure our view of Jesus Christ? He wants to set us free tonight. The chains are broken, guys. He's saying you are dead to sin, alive to Christ. How? Be baptized. Fully receive his death on the cross as fulfillment of this. Fully receive his burial. Fully receive his resurrection. And you can live in this freedom. Why is it that some are so joyful and they're going through the most horrible situation? How can an African tribe be full of joy, but they've got the gospel of truth, they've got nothing, and they're happier than you, and you're listening to your iPod? How can that take place? Jesus. Jesus. Guys, we've got so much stuff. We got so much noise. We got all these different solutions and 
you know, success and inspiration and all this stuff, but we miss out on the most amazing thing, the only thing, Jesus Christ, the creator of the universe, wants to have a relationship with you tonight. How good is that? It's amazing. Here's some of the things that may be going on in our community right now, just to lighten it up. Gossip, pride, slander, drunkenness, lying, sexual immorality, jealousy, anger, malice, resentment, bitterness, judgment, idolatry, dividing words, false humility, and the list goes on. Right now, all that great stuff is going on in some way. Why? Because our hearts are bent since the day we were born on sinning. We have self-centeredness at the very root of our heart. And Jesus is the answer to cut that root out, to cut that stuff out of our life if we allow him to. If tonight we say, you know what? By faith, I receive what you're saying. By faith, I believe it. Jesus died on the cross for me. Maybe you've received Christ. Maybe you've gone through a prayer and you're still in this place and going, Josh, that's great. But understand, we're still living in a fallen world. With you're, you're, you're going through a process of being more like Jesus. So don't be condemned not tonight. Don't be filled with shame and guilt. But this is where Paul begins to open up and helps us along the journey. Let's read on so we can help each other here. In verse 7 it says, For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin, alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. So the first 14 verses gives us an analogy of baptism. And here it's showing us that before Christ, the motivation to cry to get out of sin, if we had a conscience to get out of it, was through guilt and shame. But because you died with Christ, you're buried with Him, and now you're alive in Him, your whole, your whole motivation, your heart, has been totally changed. So where sin was the normal thing and, and accepted, when you do sin, it's actually not who you really are. Sin isn't your natural tendency anymore. Your tendency now as a believer of Christ, not because you're trying to make it a tendency, hear me out, you're not trying to love people, you're not trying to be good, you actually want to be more like Christ because of what God has done for you. Is everyone following me? And so Paul here is saying, don't understand, have faith in that, but if you do sin, know that that's not really who you are, so respond back to Christ and be baptized again in the knowledge of who he is and what he's done for you so you can overcome your sinful habits. Everyone following me? And so what, what are you going through right now? What things are you struggling with? Instead of accepting them because you know you're born again, because you know you've received Jesus Christ, or maybe tonight you can receive Jesus Christ and be born again into the family of God, maybe you need to revisit what Jesus has done for you. Not as a cliche thing, yeah, I know, G yeah, Josh, can we just have, you know, I know Romans and yeah, that's great, and then leave. No, really engage with Jesus Christ again. Let him go to work on your heart tonight. Let something happen by the power of the Holy Spirit by responding to this amazing, amazing grace. 